Chimichanga's The Wump World. I'm gonna read it for Earth Day. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone read this book? No. no. I have it at my house. All right, so make sure you don't say anything. All right? I didn't at least not to spoil it. But you read part of it? Okay. I read some. All right, ready? The Wump World was a small world, very much smaller than our world. There were no great oceans, lofty mountains, giant forests, or broad sandy deserts. The Wump World was mostly grassy meadows and clumps of leafy green trees with a few winding rivers and lakes. But it was perfect for the Wumps, who were the only living creatures there. Yeah. Does that look like any place? Nope. Oh. No. I thought it looked like Earth a little bit. Me too. Looks like the Earth a little bit. The Wumps were simple grass eaters and spent most of their time grazing on the tall, tender grass that grew in the meadows. In warm weather, they cooled themselves in the crystal clear rivers and lakes, and at night they slept in their shelter of the bumper shoot trees to keep the dew off their backs. Since the Wumps had no enemies, they wandered around just as they pleased with nothing whatever to worry about. However, the Wumps would have worried if they had known that someone a million miles away was watching their little world. One morning, the Wumps were awakened by a far off humming sound. It seemed to be coming from somewhere above, and as the humming grew into a heavy roar, the sleepy-eyed Wumps crept through the trees for a peek at the sky. Zooming straight for the earth came a great flock of pot-bellied monsters with tails and fins spitting fire and shooting out streaks of black smoke. How do you think the Wumps are feeling? Scared. I think maybe scared. I think so, too. As the monsters swooped down to land, huge legs sprang from their bulging sides, and like gaping mouths, the doors flew open, then ramps shot to the ground. And down the ramps came a horde of tiny creatures swarming out onto the meadow. Look at all those creatures. What Let's find out. These were the pollutions. Oh, they're pollutions. From the planet Pollutus. They had left their worn out old planet to start a new life in a new world. After such a long journey, the pollutions were overjoyed to find themselves on solid ground once more. So they left their planet because they messed it up, apparently. What's that, Skyler? Are they tiny? You can say it louder, what? Are they tiny? Are they tiny? Yeah. They seem a little bit tiny, right? Also, the ships are, look very big. Yeah. So we'll find out if how big they actually are. Well, this ship are they were all prattling with excitement as they followed their leader, the topmost pollution and world chief, across the meadow. At the top of a hill, the chief stopped for a long look at the surrounding countryside. Finally, he said, looks good. We'll take it. Plant the flag, sergeant. Let's get things going. Let's take what? They want the planet. They're just gonna take the planet? Yeah. Looks like it, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you notice something in this picture? Yeah. Look at the ash. Lots of smoke, lots of ash, maybe exhaust. Oh, Does that look very clean? No. 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 Really. One shrill trumpet blast brought giant machines thundering out of the yawning spaceships rolling down runways and onto the meadow. The timid wumps had been watching warily from the shelter of the trees, and at the sight of the giant machines, they were horrified. Yes, he did. Uh, the, smoke was, the smoke was coming from the ships, from those. Yeah, from the ships, also these things, these giant machines. Ugh. Maybe the smoke wasn't coming from the ships. They were coming from that. It was just a, a little bit of horse that made it come out. Oh, you think it was coming from those things? Yep. Me too. Womp womp, they cried. And in a wild-eyed panic, they went humpity-clumping off through the trees to go diving headlong into the nearest cave. Is that the house? They're scared. What do you think? Do you think it's their house? No. I think it's their house. 
You think so? I think so. I think so. Let's see. Let's see. Then down they tumbled head over heels through a twisting tunnel to end up huddled together in dark caverns while the earth-shaking machines rumbled and roared high above. Do they look happy to be there? No. no. They don't want to. Probably don't want to be there. Once they got started, the monstrous machines moved at a furious pace, gobbling up trees and grinding them to bits. More giant machines flattened the ground, followed by great scoopers, scrapers, and diggers, and gigantic cranes. Soon the entire Wump world was overrun. What are they doing? What are the machines doing? They're trying to make a new city. Trying to make a new city? And, and, and while they're making the city, they're destroying their planet. They're destroying it, look. Mm -hmm. Ripping the trees out, smashing it, yeah. ripping the grass out. Yeah. That, that means Oh, they built it. They destroyed it. Yeah. The busy little pollutions kept their mighty machines going full blast day and night without let up in a frenzy to improve their wonderful new world. Suddenly, great cities sprang up. Huge factory buildings with towering smokestacks, high-rise apartment buildings, and tall, tall office buildings. And above them all loomed the hundred-story skyscrapers. It's not very green anymore, is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, Roland. Um, the, this, this is skyscraper kind of like over there. Yeah, they're building these giant buildings, apartments, skyscrapers. Yeah. Factories. Oh. Mm. Along with the buildings came a tangle of streets and freeways with on ramps and off ramps, overpasses and underpasses, jammed with trucks, buses, and cars of all sizes rushing pell-mell in every direction. It was one great turmoil of noise and confusion, and there was still more to come. Is, yes, Skylar? Is that a city? Looks like a city. Yeah, it looks like a city. It's it's a city. city. It's it's a city. Freeways, it's cars, I don't yeah. think they're buildings. trying to make, they're just trying to destroy. I think they're just trying to help cars go more, like, drive. So they don't have to drive all the grass. So they don't have to drive on the grass. Do you think there might have been another way to do it without destroying the grass and trees? Mm -hmm. They should have just left it. The Maybe grass. Left it. Maybe left the some grass. grass. Maybe, Maybe leave some of it. Alexa says. Maybe. Meanwhile, the poor wumps remained underground, wandering aimlessly through the caverns, feeding on the fuzzy green moss growing on the ledges and the mushrooms clustered in the crannies and sipping the sweet water from pools fed by underground springs. But they were very unhappy. For all they knew, they might have to spend the rest of their days down there. The wumps didn't dare venture up to the surface, not even for a peek. They were much too frightened by the endless rumblings and roarings and loud screechings coming from above. And it was growing noisier by the day. And how did they go to sleep? How do they go to sleep? Or are you saying because it's too loud? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the more cars, so there's a lot of cars. So every time they try to sleep, it's not going to work. It's not going to work? It's too loud. Oh, my goodness, yeah. boys and girls. Oh. There was more and more noise, like you were saying. More buildings with smokestacks puffing more and more smoke, more freeways and more with more traffic shooting out more and more clouds of exhaust, more trash and more trash piles with more and more waste gushing into the rivers and lakes. That's disgusting. What's disgusting? Trash. The trash, where are they dumping it? In the lakes. The lakes, the rivers. Yeah. Then the fish won't the water won't would die. be clean. Yeah, yeah. The fish in there, could they die, die if they actually eat it. Yeah, roll it. it, it that's, not, that's not good for the earth. That's not good for the earth or the, the womp world, right? Yeah. They're not healthy. Pretty soon the cities were so clouded. Look at that. Can you imagine breathing that in? No. Ugh. 
It was so clouded by the factory smoke and the fumes from the freeways, the pollutions could barely breathe. They went sneezing and wheezing about the streets, grouching and grumbling, blaming one another for the awful mess they were in. They were very happy when they first showed up. What are they feeling now? Kind of mad, kind of grumpy. Upset. Upset. So now they're going to leave it. Do you think so? One day, an angry crowd gathered outside the world tower, demanding to see the world chief. When the chief appeared on his balcony, all the pollutions began shouting at once, we can't breathe the air, we can't drink the water, and we can't stand the noise. We've had enough. Achoo! Sneezed the chief. I know just how you feel. Something will be done. I promise. Yeah, fail. They might try to eat it. Yeah. What do you think the world chief is going to do? What do you think his he, plan is? Maybe he's going to leave that. You or think maybe, maybe leave? Probably he's, he's going to clean it. Oh, maybe clean up their mess. Yeah. Or fix it. Well, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe fix up. Fix the stuff they fix messed up. Yeah. Well, you already know what happens. Right? Oh, okay. What do you want to say? Right, there isn't fish in this world, right? But I think our friends are saying if it was Earth, right? Because it was just the wumps. With no time to lose, the chief called for a meeting with his three top outer space people. This world of ours has gone sour. We've got to get out of here quick. But first, we must find a new world, a better one. And that's your job. So get going. So his plan was to leave. Right out, Chief, barked the space people. And within 15 minutes, they were at the spaceport aboard their spaceships. Zoosh! They took off in three directions, and in seconds, they were zooming about in outer space at 7,000 miles an hour. They should have cleaned up the world first. They should have cleaned up their world first. But I mean, how? So they're just going to go to a different planet. Without Days passed with no word from the outer space people. After waiting a week, the world chief flew into a rage. Blast it all! What's keeping those bubbleheads? Then one Monday morning, out of the dark, smudgy sky, swooshed one of the spaceships. As if one of them came back. As the ship touched down, the man hopped out shouting, I've done it! I've found a new world! A bigger and better world! Nice going, lad, cried the world chief. And the crowd gathered at the spaceport, gave their hero one great rousing cheer, which ended in a fit of sneezing. Oh my gosh. What? They're sneezing all the time. But he said he found a new world to go to. In no time, the great news was sent flashing around the world over radio and TV, warning all pollutions to be packed and ready to go within 24 hours. What? They should go. They should go, you think? Well, they should clean up their mess first. They should clean up their mess. I think so. At dawn the next day, the entire population swarmed into the space center and crowded aboard the giant spaceships. Does it look like they cleaned anything up? No. They just got some stuff, got back in those ships. That's not kind for the Earth. They have to clean it up right now. Yeah. After double checking to make sure all pollutions were accounted for, the world chief gave the signal for blast off. With a thunderous roar, the giant ships shot off the ground, kazoom, up and away through the smoke blackened sky, and they were gone. And at long last, peace and quiet settled over the womp world. The sudden silence came as a shock to the womps. They could hardly believe their ears. Now they can see. Still, they wanted to take no chances, and so they remained in their caverns with ears cocked for the slightest sound. Now can they sleep? Oh, now can they sleep now that it's quiet? They're confused because it's so quiet all of a sudden. After a long, long silence, they decided it was time to go. And led by the biggest womp, they crept up the tunnel to the cave entrance to find it covered by cement. With one powerful push of his snout, the biggest womp bumped his way through. 
And one by one, the wumps waddled out onto a freeway and gaped in wide-eyed amazement. They had feared something awful was happening to their world, but this was much more than they could have imagined. They were staggered by the size of the huge buildings with walls and walls of windows looming up on every side and the broad layers of hard, flat crust covering the earth, which felt strangely cold to their feet. There was no sign of any tree or any tuft of grass. Even the sky was gone, and the wumps wondered if there was anything left for them. At least they must find out. They wandered the freeways for miles, only to find more and more buildings with endless heap of wreckage and rubble. Look at all that stuff that was left behind. For all they could see, the world was completely ruined. Foot sore and wary, the wumps were about to give up and head back for their cave when the biggest wump let out a joyful wump. Joyful? What is joyful? Joyful means that they're really happy. Really happy? I wonder what made it so happy. No, that's sad. A joyful wump. What did they find? More grass and more trees they did. Found some grass and trees that were left. And they left a little of it. Just ahead of them was a grassy meadow with a clump of bumber shoot trees. All that was left of their lovely world. Wump wumping for joy. The wumps were bounding off the freeway out onto the meadow. Pretty soon the hungry wumps were munching away on the tall tender grass. Now there was new hope for the wumps. How happy they are. Yes, he... I also think maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe they cleaned up a little. You think they cleaned up a little? Yeah, maybe they cleaned up a side for the lumps. Hmm. In time, the murky skies would clear up and the rains would wash the scum from the rivers and lakes. The tall buildings would come tumbling down and the freeways would crumble away. And in time, the green growth would wind its way up through the rubble but the wump world would never be quite the same. What is that coming out of the sidewalk? Pants. It's going to take a long time for the planet to fix itself, right? To become... Oh, it can fix itself? Sometimes. Yeah, I didn't know that. Sometimes. It takes a long time, though. That's what it's saying. To undo all this stuff. Right? The pollutions. Messed it up a lot. Mm -hmm. Right? So we gotta try to take care of our Earth. So it doesn't happen to our world. Yeah. If they come to our world. What do you think are some things the pollutions could have done differently? Help the Earth and help and help the and help the planet that they messed up. How how could they help it? Um, they cleaning up cleaning up the, the stuff out. So they should so they should remove the buildings. Take out the buildings? Yeah, and then they can find a new place to live. Break the But if they want to stay the there, maybe they buildings. should leave the grass and not cut down the trees. Maybe not cut down the trees? Yeah. Because people need to Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. they and that can't be used for them. They shouldn't have cut it down. Yeah. Because if, if they just left it, they would be so happy. Instead of break it, and then not be happy. Mm. So we got to make sure we take care of our Earth, all right? Yeah. Okay. That's what if, Earth Day is for. We should do it every day. If they come, I'll bite them. Mm. What else could we do? Oh, what if the pollutions came here? <gasps> Who is we that? should ask them if, they please don't mess up our world. Yeah, that would be bad. But Maybe give them some ideas. Chase us. And, and tell yeah. them, could you please can clean up our world first before you leave? Or maybe they don't understand us. Oh, what if they don't understand us? That's a whole other layer. But they can talk like humans. That's true, in the book they were speaking. What if they speak Spanish? Yeah. Is that all interesting? Then we won't I know what they're saying. Unless people speak Spanish. Yeah. All right, Jimmy Chungus. Are we ready to go outside?